All right, welcome into another Vegas Square snippet. And in this one, we'll be talking about Bryce Love, the running back out of Stanford, who was a Heisman candidate, near favorite coming into the season, who has had a little bit of a hiccup so far. He will now be ruled out of week three against UC Davis after, after uh, suffering uh, what has been termed an undisclosed injury. So we're not going to get any... Uh, I'm not going to get any uh, information about that one, but uh, Bryce Love so far has had, I know it's two games in, but it's been a up and down season to say the least. Uh, let's go game by game here, Token. Right. And uh, we have the first game against San Diego State. He rushed 18 times for 29 yards. Not good. No, no, especially for somebody for his caliber against not the best team around, I mean. Yeah, uh, and then followed that up with a 22-carry, 136-yard performance against USC. It's a little better, but... Yeah, slightly better, yes, absolutely. Um, he did score a touchdown as well. Point being is is that so far there are some other favorites who started the season around the same odds as him. Tua Tagovailoa, Will Greer, Dwayne Haskins, Jonathan Taylor, who have uh, impressed so far in all the games that they have played. Uh, especially Tagovailoa and Dwayne Haskins. Uh, so I ask you, Token, a 29-yard performance and a missing of week three, even if it is against UC Davis, this is a game where Love should be able to pad his stats. Yeah. Uh, and especially probably get back on track maybe, you know, average-wise. He's still averaging 4.1 yards per carry, but you know, can get it up into the seven or eight yard per carry against a team like UC Davis. This yeah. this is a team who could probably allow Bryce Love to do, you know, fifteen carries for, you know, two hundred and twenty five yards. Yeah, 150 and plus three yards, touchdowns, yeah. yeah. Uh but he's not gonna play. So uh it's gonna be really hard to duplicate twenty one hundred yards and nineteen touchdowns uh when, when you, you miss a game like yeah. this. Yeah, especially one that you could probably just steamroll over. Uh, yeah, especially next week they've got uh, they got Oregon next week, so he should be hopefully ready to play that game. But I mean, is Bryce Love at this point, you know, ticket holders or anybody who's looking to bet on him? His current odds have now slipped uh, to sixteen to one. I got a feeling that it's still not good value because running back is a very hard position to win a Heisman Trophy. Uh, even being said with that, it is probably the second easiest position to win a Heisman Trophy, but quarterbacks dominate that. Well, the Heisman race. And, yeah, uh, quarterbacks dominate all that kind of conversation. Uh, so, you know, it already sets the second easiest, like I say, with the, with the running backs so far back, you know, as far as getting the love and the publicity. He's also on the West Coast here. I know what Bryce Love can do, but can a, a voter in Georgia – you know, does he know what Bryce Love can do? You know, you can see the stats. Woo, wow. But, yeah. I mean, the man runs really well. Point being is, is, though, I'll go back to the question since I decided to ramble off on a tangent. Uh, at 16 to 1 currently at the odds on oddsshark.com, do you find any value in taking Bryce Love at that price? No, I would absolutely fade that, especially one bad performance, a good performance, and sitting out a week for the first three weeks. I see. No value in that, really. I mean, there, there's a little value, but realistic value. You can't uh, feel good when you grab them. At, I think he opened up like five to one or six to one. You can't yeah. really feel good at this point. You no. probably, you know, I know you you heed warning to all of our listeners, but that might be a ticket you can light on fire. He'd have yeah. to run for 220 plus yards for the rest of the season. Yeah, he would have to go out there, dominate, and Stanford will probably have to be in the playoff talk for him to be more. Well, it's possible. More announced They're, as a Heisman finalist. I believe, what what are they ranked right now? Number nine. nine. So, yeah. I mean, you know, a couple big wins. The, the win against USC. Uh, if USC loses USC loses to Texas this week, that win won't look as good. Mm -hmm. uh, who Texas is a three-and-a-half point favorite, by the way. We'll, get, we'll talk about that on a Pick and Chatter podcast. But, yeah. Um, so let's talk about, you know, who we have now. I mean, you have Tua Tagovailoa, who has now pretty much been entrenched as the starter as they're talking about Jalen Hurts uh, registering at this point. Uh, we have Will Greer, West Virginia, Dwayne Haskins, Ohio State, currently on Odd Shark as the leaders heading into week three. Tagovailoa is three to one. Will Greer is four and a half to one. Dwayne Haskins, six and a half to one. Uh, those three guys, who do you like uh, the best in, in, in that spot? I like Tagovailoa. 
I, I just like saying that name. It's it's fucking hot as fuck. But uh, Tua Tagovailoa. I, I think Alabama on both sides of the ball makes him look significantly better. Yeah, I, I have a. I feel like uh, there's a almost an overwhelming overration. That's not a right overrating of Tagovailoa. Not saying that he's bad, but I think the quarterback position at Alabama has been very mundane yeah, over the last so, yeah. decade. You know, maybe, you know, you can say AJ McCarron. Uh but I think that his performance, especially in the high in the uh excuse me, not the Heisman trophy, but the uh national championship game last year, is putting Tua on this pedestal that uh he hasn't gotten to SEC play yet. Yeah. So, you know, if if the SEC is as good as everybody likes to rant and rave about, then Tua's gonna be in for a nice seven, eight week stretch of tougher games. Yes. I am really high on the Dwayne Haskins kid. Are you? Yeah, I mean, Ohio State's looked really good through two games. You know, they obviously they haven't gone through their Big Ten schedule, but yeah, last even year, without Urban Meyer, I they looked pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, he came in against Michigan last year and really controlled the game when J.T. Barrett got hurt, uh, leading them to a win against Michigan. And I think he's just he's probably the best quarterback prospect. To come out of, to be at Ohio State for a while. I mean, I thought Braxton Miller was, you know, a good running quarterback, a little bit overrated for what he was. JT Barrett, the same thing. Smart kid, but just really couldn't put it all together. Cardell Jones was a one hit wonder. Uh, you know, Craig Krenzel, same thing. I know that's, you know, dating back a little bit more, but I mean, Dwayne Haskins has a super arm, and obviously he's fast, quick, and ability to scramble is second to none. Uh, 650 is obviously the longest shot of the three of those guys. Obviously, I want to give a little love to Mackenzie Milton at UCF. He's currently going off at 16-1 to as well with Bryce Love. I don't think he has a realistic chance uh, to go to New York and even be a finalist just because of the P5 bias. But, uh, hey, you never know. Yeah. He might be worth more of a sprinkle to you at 16-1 to than Bryce Love is. Yeah, I, I would say they're about the same in my mindset because he's not in the P5 conference. and I mean, their game this week's canceled. Is that correct? So that is correct. Yes. Uh, another guy I like who's down the board a little bit is Jarrett Stidham of Auburn. If he can have another solid season, like he did last year, and beat Alabama again, uh, I think he deserves probably a look at maybe being a finalist in New York. And he's currently going off at forty to one. Mm-hmm. So same with Jake Fromm. If they're able to revenge against Bama, and uh, well, I don't think they play Bama this year. But if he has another good season like he had last year, he's fifty to one right now as well. Um, he's a little less, I'm a little less confident in him than I am in, uh, Jarrett Stidham. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see. There's a lot of football left to play, obviously. And, um, but I think if any running back is going to win it now, I think we got to start looking at Jonathan Taylor, uh, the running back for Wisconsin, because he's, uh, he's not slowing down right now. No, it seems like he's running away with it as far as running backs. Yeah. Shout out to the, uh, to the uh, winning and boozing podcast. My still, every time I see Jonathan Taylor, the running back for Wisconsin, it reminds me of when they called him, because he has a fumbling problem, they called him yeah. Jonathan Taylor turnover. <laughs> That's still <laughs> the best. Uh, so, um, all right, well, let's go forward uh, with a little side bet for five bucks. I'll let you have Tagovailoa, and I'll take Dwayne Haskins. Even, right. even money. Fair enough. All right, so uh, this has been another snippet. We appreciate you uh, listening, and we'll catch you on the next one.